itself out. I have set up my mat against a wall and I've put an extra one that I have just so I can move from side to side off the mat. This is not necessarily something you have to do. Um, it's just purely for convenience. Um, and what we're gonna do today, I've been thinking a lot about just more advancements in the, in the practice. And you know, I don't really practice them on a regular basis anymore, but like handstands, forearm stands, things that take us off the ground from our feet. And I wanna bring this into a practice that can show you how to integrate it in a way that you can work towards doing it on a regular basis. Um, but it also doesn't mean you have to actually take on these advancements. You could totally skip them the entire time. Like if you don't have a wall that you feel safe enough using, or if you don't even need to necessarily have the wall if you do feel like you're um, able to work without it. I like the wall because it helps me stay in balance upside down longer, which helps me build the strength. So it is always a good tool either way. Um, to start the class though, we're gonna start at the back of the mat. And you can do whatever distance works for you, hips width together. And just give yourself a moment to stand. At the end of class today, we're gonna to do another creative, visual, creative visualization. And we're gonna really work towards thinking of something that we are building, thinking of something that would make us happy, um, leans into our passions, something that doesn't have any obstacles. Like you, you take the ob obstacles away, like there's no um, limitations to this. So if you would like to just already start to kind of sprinkle that in into your thought process and your focus to the full practice today, especially because we're going to be working towards something a little bit more challenging, definitely go there. Center yourself around your breathing for now. And I would say cultivate some of that whispering breath, Ujjayi breathing. A big thing that um, we want to stay tuned into is the breath during the moments where things are a little topsy-turvy, right? When we are doing more stamina-based movements or more intense shapes that might pull on us in different ways that we're not used to, the breath uh, remains consistent. Let's exhale everything out. Take in a breath, try to fill up the whole space. And exhale. Good, if your eyes are closed, go ahead and open them. You're gonna take your hands and you're gonna swing them out to go up. Lean to the right, lean to the left. And you can do that grip that we do in the hot hatha practice, which is the 10 fingers with the index up, crossing thumbs. If you wanna just do all 10 fingers or you wanna do palms pressed, this gives you a little bit more leverage and can help you find the equality between the full sides of your arms front to back. We're gonna lift from the center and then we're gonna to lean to the right. So maintaining the side bend, we wanna be able to get space along the side body with this and it builds quite a bit of heat. So as you are leaning into this, and it's hard to assess because we don't have mirrors to help us, you're gonna try not to twist um, unintentionally, right? So you're gonna make sure the hips are as level and square as you can and the armpits are as square as you can to your facing. The arms can pull back, but not to the extent that you start back bending, right? So close the bottom ribs and then try to access the lift from the feet. Take another big breath. Come all the way up. If you wanna wiggle, wiggle, lift, and then go to the other side. Yeah, notice if one side feels a little tighter in certain ways or if there's anything different. You're gonna consistently try to draw the belly in without losing the expansion of your breath. Try lifting the toes and then at the same time soften your fingers but push the palms together. Take a breath. Come all the way up. You're gonna lift up. Go ahead and separate the hands. I don't know if you can see this in the frame. Hopefully you can. 
but you're gonna flex the fingers back like you were in a push-up position um, or a handstand. Let your head come to neutral. And then you're gonna use your arms to lift your ribs, scoop your belly, and push the ceiling and the floor away. And just hold that. Low belly in, bottom ribs in. Take a big breath. On your exhale, bring the palms together. And let's fold all the way down. Nice, bend into each leg. So I'm keeping the feet together, but if you feel like you're not super loose right now, it's like not feeling good, go ahead and open up the feet. We're gonna do a little side, uh, backside body stretching. So if you're keeping the feet together, you can bend the knees generously and go underneath the heels. This is very much in line with our full hot hatha practice if you're used to that. And you're gonna to try to wrap the elbows back and lift the seat while taking that rounding out of the front, right? And you can keep the knees bent, but you're gonna to try to leverage the chest out as the hips tilt. If that's too much, you can do hips width, go behind. Same idea, right? Take this kind of curving out lengthen and the chin out does help eventually though the head dropping will help you leverage your hips higher when the space is available you can do two piece finger grip as well i would say if you're doing this grip though try not to hood the back with your shoulders right you're not going to let the grip um, pull you into spaces that aren't necessarily helping you anymore or serving you anymore so if you constantly know you crowd the neck make sure that you're drawing that down the back and using the grip to kind of wrap the elbows Take a full breath into the spine, the full torso, and exhale. Good, release your grip. Let's take our half lift. So push into the point that's accessible right now. And remember, we're trying to find energy from feet to hands through the spine. Inhale, lengthen the chest. And then exhale, fold it down. Good, do it again. Inhale, press and lengthen. And exhale, fold. One more, inhale. Exhale, fold, head heavy. Walk your hands all the way out to find a plank position. Okay, so if you are going against a wall, I'm gonna suggest that you don't get super, super close to the top of your mat. So just to make sure you're setting it up with the proper distance and giving yourself some space. Cause we're still definitely gonna lower to chaturangas and stuff and you don't want your face to be um, feeling confined into the wall. We're going to come forward to the tippy toes, lower halfway or all the way. Use your knees or not. Chest up for a back bend. You can take it to Cobra if you're feeling the need for that. And then go back to down dog. Okay, bend the knees. Find the wrap of the upper arm and don't lose that first finger and thumb. Head heavy, shake it out. Exhale everything out. Take in a full breath. And exhale. Walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Let the head go. Halfway lift. And exhale, drop it. Inhale, stand all the way up. You can push through the hands like we did earlier. Lift. And then exhale, fold down. Halfway lift. Exhale, walk all the way out to plank. Take an extra breath in, pull forward. Exhale, go down. Back bend with your breath in. Stretch it out. Exhale, back to down dog. Inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, walk the hands to the feet. Halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, fold down. Halfway lift, exhale, walk all the way out to plank. Inhale, pull forward, exhale, go down. Back bend with your breath in. And exhale, back to down dog. Inhale, push the ground away. Exhale, walk it back. So at this point, follow your own breath, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go a little swifter from my folding when I walk back out to plank this time. All right, so this half lift, inhale, exhale, 
chaturanga instead of adding an extra breath in. See if you can start to build a swing of your breath and your movements, warming the body up, finding synchronicity. Less space for wandering minds. And just giving yourself some space to be in the moment. Two more. Walking all the way back. Standing up, using that hand arrangement to push the ceiling away. Half lifting is a way of prepping for press up handstands. Once you can get your hands down. Eventually we shift the weight forward into the palms. Last one. Okay, pause in this down dog. And definitely take a moment just to be there. Realign it. All right, so when you're looking at your feet, look at the ankles. Are you supinating or pronating? Are you falling in or out? Try to align that by lifting the toes. When you lift the toes, keep kicking the heels and notice if they turn in. Try to get that feeling of spreading the sit bones with the bend of the knees. And if the bend of the knees and you spread your sit bones, your knees go in, push your knees out with your uh, a little bit more so they're in line with toes. Low belly is scooped and you're going to use your hands to push the ground away without losing that center of palm. Exhale everything out. And inhale. And exhale. Okay. Look at your hands. You're just going to simply step your right foot right between your thumb. And when you do that, we're gonna move with our breath a little bit, make this more swift. So just take a moment to kind of shift into this, put the back knee down. Don't untuck the back toes. Um, if you're putting the back knee down, you're gonna to start to decide later if you're gonna do this the whole time or if you're gonna play with it. I would say you're never gonna like jam the knee down. It can even bend a little bit and not go all the way down. Your hands can be tented like mine. You could also take blocks underneath your hands I'll show you that so you have that option when we start to move it. And you don't even have to move your hands from this if you, when you go back to down dog too. So everybody go back to down dog, but if you're using the blocks, now you can kind of see how that works. Put these back there. Once you get back to down dog, we're gonna switch sides. Left foot through. Now tenting the fingers, you can drop that back knee, keep the back ball of your foot down. And then, you know, I also like to play with that movement forward, kind of leveraging the armpit of that left knee and uh, leveraging the armpit and the left knee together to get the chest to stretch. But just letting yourself move, figure out where that stretch is coming from. Get the hips to level. Blocks are fine again here. Step it back to down dog. Bend the knees in your down dog for this. Okay, let's go a little bit more. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Now inhale forward, pause. Exhale, straighten the front leg. And you can use your blocks again for this too or keep a little bend in the front, in the front knee. Flex the toes. Put the foot down. Take an inhale. Exhale, sink down. Step it back. Inhale, left foot forward. Soften the back knee, look up. Exhale, kick the front leg straight. Sink down, back to down dog. Okay, inhale, right foot. Exhale, kick it. 
Inhale, sink it. Exhale, step it. Inhale, left foot. Exhale, kick straight. Inhale, sink down. Exhale, back. And again, inhale, right foot. Exhale, kick it straight. Inhale, sink it down. And go back. Inhale, left foot. And kick it, kick it straight. Inhale, sink it down. And go back. Let's add on. Inhale, right foot. And kick it straight. And sink it down. Draw the back knee to the floor. Keep your foot down and start to stretch back. So you'll want to be safe with this back knee. For those of you that are feeling something already, I would say step it back or um, do less rather, but put something underneath this, or you can even put something behind the knee too to prevent you from going too deep. Um, I'm going to keep this back foot because I'm going to lift out of it in a second, but you can sink down. So this isn't quite half split. I'm getting a ball of the foot stretch on one side and a stretch on the underside of the right leg. I'm also going to play with turning my leg in and out. You can use blocks to lift you out of this a little bit more too, to support you more. You're going to sink forward, put the hands down, take it to your three legged dog. Go ahead and open it up. Take it, inhale, lift the leg higher. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, look forward. Let's exhale, step forward. Take it to about hips width distance. Half lift. And then exhale, take it to chair pose. So in this chair pose, I'm gonna push the heels of the hands forward. And I'm gonna to try to reach this wall as much as I can. Not by the fingers, but the heels of your hands. If you're not sure where the arms are from the shoulders, bend the elbows and wrap them towards each other at shoulders width and then push from there. Now start to lower, but not to the point where you can actually use the wall. Just lower a little bit in the chest. Good, take a breath. You're gonna keep the torso, step your left foot back, high lunge with these hands. Scoop the low belly, let the back knee bend. Lift through the chest. A lot of times what happens is the hips will start to sway open. So you really have to think about drawing down through the front heel and back through that outer hip without losing the lift of the front of the pelvis. Good, take a big breath. Exhale, sink forward. We're gonna kick to standing split. So letting a generous bend happen in the standing leg this is going to be an opportunity to play with some movement. So if you want to stay here, stay here, use your blocks. If you want to play with hitch kicking, having your hands down, so you need to bend the knee enough to get them there at shoulders width. Don't change anything about your chaturanga arms or your plank arms. This is what they are. Already start to push the ground away. Soften your standing knee and start to switch your legs. Land with a bent knee. You can bend the legs as you lift, but try to use less momentum until maybe you get to the point that you're upside down. Once you're upside down, I'm not pushing against the wall, right? That builds too much momentum, right? So I'm going to try to use one leg against the wall to find my fingers and push the floor away. I can also play with one leg into the chest. For those of you that have a lot of extra back bend and the low back, this can help you really maintain the length and eventually get you to Reach to that top leg too. Hold what you got. Slowly, right foot down if you were there. Left foot back, same lunge we started in. Lift up to high lunge. So upside down to right side up, we're gonna twist it. Take your hands to your heart. Just cross over and let's make this one feel good. Like a feel goody twist. So if you wanna bring your back knee down you can keep that like we did earlier. It feels really good for me and my hip flexor. Make sure you're not bullying your front leg. Maybe you come across and you work towards binding, right, which would be top arm behind the back. And just getting the chest open from there. Try to push your leg into your arm. 
can also just really work the torso around and use your hand to drop that front hip and your arm to push the knee into. Okay, take a big breath. Exhale, bring the hands down. Step it back to down dog. Move it around a little bit if it feels good. Let's do the other side. Left leg steps through. Inhaling up, exhaling hips back. Inhaling to sink down, drop the back knee and start to sink into that stretch. There's a lot of places you can move to, like you can move your torso around. And turn out the front foot. Notice if this side's got less range of motion in this direction, maybe more. From years of dance for me, I know like, I have one leg that just wants to turn out all the time and then one that's just like, mm-mm, not happening. Most likely from doing things and dance pieces repetitively on one, repetitively on one side. You're gonna sink forward, hands down. Three-legged dog, lift it up and back. Move it. Lift it up again. Step it through. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step to forward fold. Take your half lift. Exhale, chair pose. Down arms up. Let's do that again. Push to the heels of your hands. This is your handstand. We're just in a bent variation of it. This is your down dog too. Really lengthen the armpits. Again, if you're not sure if the arms are going in the direction that we're looking for, bend the elbows out. Not like this kind of like open chest bend, which could feel good for some of you, but just enough to where you can feel like you have movement available to you. And you might have to be wider, then push the butt back from the hands pushing up. Sit a little lower, get the legs working. Take a breath there. Exhale, hands behind the back, keep your legs. All 10 fingers or grab your strap, pull the chest open, lift the chest up. So low belly scoops from ribs pulling up. Take the inhale, exhale, fold with the grip. See if you can try to reach for the wall with your knuckles. You may get there, you may not. Oh. If you can keep your hands together, try to keep them together, use your strap or clothing, whatever you need. We're gonna sit back into the chair with the hands grip, lift the chest, take another big breath. On your exhale, release the arms forward. Step your right leg back, high lunge. Swivel that left hip back. Soften the back knee, kick through the both legs. You might have to distance that stance shorter or longer depending on what your needs are. Lift through the arms. Take a big breath. On your exhale, bring the hands down, kick up to that standing split. And again, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can stay right here with this, grabbing, balancing. If you wanna do some kicking or working towards handstand balancing against the wall, soften your standing knee, get the hands set up, soft elbows, not bent, just a little soft. Use your belly, you're gonna lift and kick, lift and kick. Try to go slower up and down until you get up there. This side's always harder for me. Good, and then once you've landed, you can pull that one leg in, lift the one leg up, try to scoop through the belly, and use the weight of your fingers. Push the floor away. You can also let your head go too. Use the ground, and don't give up.
slowly, slowly step it down. Right leg goes back. Let's take the arms up. Inhale. Exhale, we'll twist it. All right, so you can stay up here. We did some twists on Tuesday, so if you watch that practice, um, you can always kind of land in those areas. If you wanna go a little deeper, you can draw the armpit across. Maybe you bind it. Take a big breath. When you're ready, unravel it. Let's take it back to down dog. Okay, so I would like to flow this and just kind of see how this goes. Those of you that aren't hand standing, um, you can hang out and forward fold. You could keep the standing split, practice other balances there. If you're doing the hand standing, we'll hold that through the couple of breaths rather than just move through it quickly. So you have some time to play. Exhale everything out. Take a big breath. And exhale. Okay, inhale, right leg forward. Exhale, lift the hips. Inhale, sink down. Exhale, sink back. Inhale, pull forward. Take the right leg up. On your exhale, sink forward and down. Put the left foot down and then step forward fold. Take your halfway lift. Exhale, chair pose, use whatever arms work for you. Inhale, push the ceiling away. Exhale, step it back, high lunge. Lift through the chest. Exhale, kick off. Work towards your handstand or your standing split. Put some weight in the fingers. You're gonna bend the right knee into the chest if you're in your handstand and slowly try to step the leg back. We're just gonna take our high lunge one more time, skipping the twist. Exhale, hands down, step it back, down dog. Inhale, left leg forward. Looking up, exhale, lift through the hips. Inhale, sink down into the lunge. Put the knee down, exhale, swing the hips back again. Good, inhale, sinking forward. Lift the left leg up, shake it out. Inhale, lengthen and exhale to step. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, fold. Halfway lift. Chair pose. Take a breath in. Exhale, step the right leg back, high lunge, prepare, kick off. You can use the momentum of that to lift you into that second handstand. You might just take it to standing split. When I'm trying to find my balance of this, I'm scooping the belly and I'm very zoomed in to one point between my thumbs, but if it's too much for your neck with the wall, let the head go. Push the ground away. Slowly control, step it back. High lunge, arms up. Exhale, hands down. Step it to down dog. Pausing there. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out. Okay, hey, let's just play with the last edge of that. You're gonna take an inhale to bring your right leg forward. Exhale, lift the hips up and back. Now inhale, take it to high lunge. Exhale, try that handstand again. Push, lift. And then stay with it. Maybe both legs all the way up, scooping the belly, trying to get the weight forward. You can also play with bending the knees and trying to get your butt to the wall if you wanna play with hollow backs, but be gentle. Take that right leg down, step it back. Good, arms up, inhale. 
Exhale, hands down. Down dog. One more time. Inhale, left leg forward. Exhale, hips up and back. Inhale, sink down. High lunge. And go for it. Kick off. Standing split or handstand. Build the strength. Let the head go. Look down. Scoop the belly. Take breaks. When you're ready to come down, go ahead and put that left foot forward. One more high lunge here. Exhale, hands down. Step it back to down dog. Good. Walk your hands all the way to your feet. Take some weight off of the arms. Head heavy. Let's do the hands behind the back. Take the arms over the head. Just breathing into it. Release your arms down. You're gonna soften the knees, take your right foot, step it wide to the right if you have your mat there, cool. If not, no worries. Right leg will stay straight, left leg will stay bent, toes are still facing forward. Stick the butt out, put your hands under the shoulders, tented or flat. Engage up through the, the quad and the leg muscles of the right leg, extend the chest. You should be able to lift the toes and you want your heels in line. Arms out to the side. Getting the legs to turn on, giving the arms a break. Shift your weight. Good, do it again. Keep it low, shift the weight. If you want more of a challenge, arms by the ears, shift the weight. Do one more round of that. Shift the weight. Shift the weight. Bring your hands down. Face towards that right foot. Flip your back heel up. Take the arms on the inside of your leg. Chest forward. Drop the back knee down. Untuck the toes. Turn out the left, uh, the right leg and bring yourself down to elbows. You can also use a block. If you wanna twist this, keep your hand in line with your back knee and your armpit and start to lift up and pull around. If you have a little bit more range of motion, you may be able to get a hand to the ankle and you may even be able to swim this arm back to grab the back foot, so make a figure eight connection. Try not to sway this way for now, keep it in. You'll release that as you're ready. Come up right, toes in front of the heel again. Lean back into your back knee. Take the same arm as leg that's in front and start to bring your shoulder underneath. So you're gonna round the front in and then go under. So think like right leg over the shoulder like a backpack. Put your hand on the outside of that foot. You can lift the back leg up as an option and look forward. You might st stay with the knee down. You might play with binding this, taking that hand behind the back then the other hand and then lifting the leg up, hugging in at the, the knee and the shoulder. You may play with getting into the arm balance where you lengthen the leg forward and you shift off of the back foot. Just give yourself some room to explore it. Take a breath. Good. Come up to the hands, take that right leg back up your left leg on the outside of the left hand. Drop the back knee down, turn the toes out, come to the outer edge of the foot. Give yourself some wiggle room. All right, what are your needs? Blocks with the elbows. Maybe you're wanting to twist it. I'm gonna go lower for that. Pulling the chest open.
You can release whatever binds you've got. Hands inside of the leg. Lean back into your standing knee behind you. Take your left hand into your left ankle. Round the belly first, scoop. See if you can get just underneath there. So for some of us that have a little bit more tightness, this might be just what you work on. Hugging the knee in and trying to get the hips square and getting a little bit more of a connection down to the floor. You can also, again, push forward with the shoulder. Take the hand out, flip the palm and try to bind it. If you wanna play with balancing, you can lift the knee off the ground behind you. If you wanna play with arm balancing, hands at shoulders width, well, a little bit wider probably. Hug the knee up and over. So you have to really squeeze your knee and your arm together. Chin will pull forward. And this side for me is gonna be a little tighter, but you lengthen and then you drop in. Maybe the back leg lifts. One more breath wherever you are. And then slowly take it back to down dog. Walk your hands to the center of your mat. Walk your feet to the center of your mat, your hands to the center of your mat, and then roll up. Shrug the shoulders, draw the shoulders down. So we're gonna go to the wall next, just to give us some room to stretch out the chest and shoulders. I wanna give you guys a dolphin, and then the option to play with forearm stand if you wanna play with it against the wall, since we're using it today. And then we'll start to slow it down. So we've done this before, but you wanna give yourself enough space to where you can start to put your chest against the wall. Um, and you eventually will have probably hips in line with your heels. Put the hands up and then you're gonna stick your butt out and you're gonna to start to pull your chest in. So you can kind of figure out what distance makes it more comfortable for you. And it doesn't have to be chin up. You can put your head on the wall too. And with this too, think about pulling in at the elbows. You can even come to here too if it's more isolated. I'm still also, see how like my butt can kind of stick out? I'm still gonna scoop it into the belly so I'm not dumping all of the pressure into that one area. Start to lift. Let's take one arm to a wall. You can also do it against the wall or against like an open space wall. Elbow in line with the hand and just turn your torso away from it. Get this full front space to stretch. And switch sides. I don't know if you guys can see Callie in the frame, but she looks really cute right now. She's like just at the edge of my mat. Okay, so shake it out for a second. Again, as I described with the handstands, you can totally skip the forearm prep or the forearm stand itself. Um, but if you're feeling like you wanna go into it, definitely do it against a wall if you wanna maintain like holding it longer. So we're gonna start by just going to do down dog. And those of you that might wanna skip this, you may do forearm plank, right? And just hold that for like a minute, um, which will help you definitely build up towards finding your, for uh, your forearm stand. So dolphin elbows come down. We're gonna lift the butt up. And if you're not sure what has happening with the hands, you can put a block right between and give yourself something to aim for with your eyes. Um, you also, as you start to do this, I didn't say this yet, but you can put a strap uh, around your arms if you have a hard time holding them together. But know that when you start to put a strap between your arms, you don't wanna push into it because the feeling is to be pushing in, right? So you could always do block and block and squeeze towards each other. I would think, I actually like that a little bit better than the strap. It just gives you more of the actual action we're looking for once you're upside down. Anywho, wherever you're at with your prop usage, lift a dolphin. You can stay here and play with this. 
You can go to forearm plank or pick a leg. If you feel confident, lift it up and start to push the ground away. So play with the leg touching the wall behind you and try to take some of that extra sway out. I mean, you might have to get closer to the wall to do that. Uh, forearm stands can be easier to back bend and balance because it counterbalances the legs. But eventually you do want to work towards the same idea as a, a straight line, that up to down feeling. But take a few moments. We've been working on the arms a lot, so I'm losing stamina already. I'm gonna try to hold it just a little bit longer. pushing with the whole forearm. And I still plan on coming out with a forearm tutorial, forearm stand tutorial, which we'll go over and dissect more of what's actually happening here. But go ahead and come down when you're ready and just mm. take like an elongated child's pose with the arms, if that feels good. Let your head go for a moment. And then just let the, the floor take your weight. Maybe come back to that thing if you've already got something or you're still kind of churning it around that you want to work towards or build or manifest. And it's not about like rights and wrongs and obstacles. It's just your vision. It's your imagination. It's your ability to see and create whatever you desire and putting it out there. From here, let's come all the way up to at the knees. We're gonna do camel against the wall. So if you have the wall and you're using it, of course, I love doing this against the wall because it shows you your boundaries. So you can also take a block and put it between your knees too, which will give you even more of an understanding of your inner thighs and how this works, but you're going to go flush against the wall. And you want your pelvis to really be able to push and you want your knees at hips width and you can do tops of feet or balls of feet down. Put the hands on the low spine and then you're going to try to create space between the top of your pelvis and the bottom ribs. So you can even use your hands like I'm doing for that. Now keep your hands pushing the pelvis to the wall. Let your shoulders relax, elbows pull in, head back. And you're gonna try to get your bottom ribs to go as high up as you can without letting your pelvis disconnect from the wall. Pull the head farther back. And then you can start to take the hands back if you want, but keep the pelvis pushing against the wall and your chest lifting up. Hold it. Hugging at the knees, which will take some of that pressure out of the low back because you're using your inner thigh. Release, come all the way up. Sit down, scoop the belly, let the head go, and take it in. No, no, um, you don't have to identify with anything that's happening. Like there's nothing, it doesn't have to be labels of how the body's feeling and moving through this reorganization. Just experience it. Relax the lips apart. Unfurrow the brow. Free up the belly, let it move. Exhale everything out. Take a breath in. And empty. Let the head move for a moment again. Shrug the shoulder space. And we're gonna do our butterfly pose seated as requested by my husband. So you can keep the facing the wall. I would move the butt cheeks out from underneath you. And remember with this, you don't wanna feel pulled underneath yourself and on your tailbone. We're gonna try to get forward to a place where you are forward on the pubic bone and the sit bones. And then start to lean forward and you can Work towards keeping the feet towards each other from ball of foot each side. You can push the knees down gently if that feels good. 
I like to go forward to where my armpits clap, uh, grasp onto the shins and then pull your heart forward. Come all the way up. Take one hand to one knee gently. Take the other hand behind the back. Push that knee down softly and start to pull the chest away from it. Do the other side. Still stay forward into the pubic bone. Nice, release that. And then I invite you to pick and choose something that feels really good to you right now. We didn't do pigeon, so that's a great stretch. Um, we can do legs up again, but like without all of the arm work. So if you want to do that, I invite you to put your legs up the wall and that's where you take your Shavasana. Um, but definitely take a few moments just to kind of figure that out. As always with the end of class, I'm not going to pull you out of Shavasana so that you have the, the full power of your choice and your meditation and what length that would be for you. So if you want to set a timer, start to work that too. I'm going to read a very short blurb from the creative visualization book by Shakti Gwain. Just to give you a prompt to work with today, I like the image of this one. Um, she calls it the pink bubble meditation. And it's a lot um, similar to what we've already been discussing and manifesting something that you desire and creating it fully with your imagination and then letting it out into the universe. So um, start to get a little bit more settled if you haven't already. and if you need to pause it, pause it, and then come back to us. All right, so let's, let's get started. Imagine something that you would like to manifest. Imagine that it has already happened. Picture it as clearly as possible in your mind. Now in your mind's eye, surround your fantasy with a pink bubble. Put your goal inside the bubble. Pink is the color associated with the heart. And if this color vibration surrounds whatever you visualize, it will only bring to you that which is in perfect affinity with your being. The third step is to let go of the bubble and imagine it floating off into the universe, still containing your vision. This symbolizes that you are emotionally letting go of it. Now it is free to float around in the universe, attracting and gathering energy for its manifestation. There's nothing more you need to do. Exhale everything out. Take a full breath in and exhale. Namaste.